Greer delivers, caught, sails, running, touchdown, Mountaineers, 60 yards. What's up, everybody? Matt Leinert here, and I have the pleasure of sitting down with former, which is probably crazy to say, former All-American wide receiver from West Virginia, David Sills, who is getting ready for the pro day and mm -hmm. the upcoming draft. You have obviously a really remarkable story. You're former All-American wide receiver at West Virginia, but that's not where it started for you. At 13 years old, yeah. you were offered a scholarship by Lane Kiffin, who we both know really well. Um, take us back to that time and, and kind of tell us the story of how that all came about. Yeah, I mean, so it really started with right when Coach Kiffin got the job, uh, him and, you know, Steve Clarkson, who, you, yeah, you know, you know really well, coach, yeah. were, um, you know, they were talking and just talking about guys in the area. And somehow my highlight got brought up and it was a highlight that Steve made with like a corny, you know, a corny, <laughs> corny highlight. Music yeah, corny music and everything. Looking back on it, I can't watch it without like just laughing or pausing or turning it off. But um, yeah, so I guess my highlight got brought up somehow, and he's, you know, he said, you know, I'll offer that kid today, and <laughs> Steve kind of said, like, you know, he's he's only in seventh grade, and he's like, I don't care, you know, I'll offer him, and that's when it kind of, uh, you know, he told me and everything, and you know, I grew up watching you and Reggie, and um, you know the the best days of USC yeah. and you know so it was always it was always a school that I was like you know I want to play for USC you know going through USC's prime and everything um, you know so when I got that offer I was like you know what <laughs> this is what this is my dream this is what I want to do and you know that's where I actually committed um, you know at 13 which was it was wild at the time there really wasn't big social media right. Um, but, you know, now you look at it and it's almost like, okay, it happens, you know, more and more often, mm -hmm. um, you know, camps start younger, everything, you know, happens quicker nowadays. Um, you know, so that's really how the offer kind of came about, uh, you know, at 13. What, what was, so you went from, you know, relatively anonymous, obviously you're, you're a highly touted quarterback, you're, you're growing in the ranks, but you're in seventh grade and you get that offer, what was the biggest change in your life? Like, because it was national news. Everybody picked up that story. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, if it was really a first um, that happened like in, in now, in today's generation, mm -hmm. like with the way social media, like I said, I mean, social media wasn't as big. Right. You know, now if that was a first and you know, the kids got 100,000 followers in the yeah. next day. So it wasn't, it really wasn't something that I really noticed right away. You know, I had to do like Good Morning America the next, well, that's you know, a the big next, deal for yeah, but it was kind of like, you know, at 13, you're just like, whatever. Like, you don't really, like, I didn't really understand much at the time. And then, you know, I went to a small private school, okay. so not many, and, and football in Delaware isn't huge anyway, so they don't really understand so it. So school and it wasn't like it was, it, it was like I went to a big school in Texas where <laughs> everyone knew what was going on. Um, you know, and my teammates and everything, they were great through right. it all. Like they didn't treat me any different. My coaches treated me the same. Now, like it, when I went to camps and, you know, went to stuff like that, it was kind of like, you know, that's the kid. That's, mm -hmm. you know, so you kind of could feel it in, in that regard. But you know, it wasn't like it was like a huge, there was a huge change. Um, you know, obviously, I think put a little bit of a target on my right. back. Um, you know, but that that was pretty natural. I mean, that's going to happen when you're playing another team. They're saying, yeah, I want to take that kid out. Um, you know, but there really wasn't any drastic changes, um, you know, other than maybe doing a, a couple little, of the bigger interviews. And I was going to say a little more attention at school. Probably. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit, but... Um, you know, still like most of those people didn't really understand yeah. what was going on. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's crazy now to think about, like you said, if that would have happened now, it's almost more normal. It, it happens, especially in basketball, but yeah. that happens. You immediately have hundreds of thousands of followers. You have Twitter, you have the access to social media. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think back then, what, I was just what on, year, what year I was just was on that? Facebook. Yeah, yeah that was, was Facebook. Yeah. yeah, I was, I mean. Now Facebook's kind of like I still don't even have a Facebook till this day. Yeah, I'm, so I'm lagging in the in Facebook's kind of like played world. out now for all like my parents and stuff. <laughs> so when you are get offered at 13 by Lane Kiffin, I imagine that was a big change, you know, for your parents and your family. What was their reaction to to that? Yeah, I mean, it was it was, you know, definitely something that I think was it was almost harder for them than right. it was for me, um, you know, because they were 
getting ripped on every blog, every, you know, why would you put this much pressure on your kid? Why would you, you know, do this, do that? Um, you know, and that was one thing that they kind of uh, had to take in and, and deal with and almost have tough skin about. But, um, you know, really, I think, um, you know, they did a great job of preparing me and raising me, um, you know, and really just teaching me to be the same, no matter, like I said, through the highs mm -hmm. and the lows, no matter what it is. Um, you know, and they, they were with me every step of the way. Um, you know, my mom, she would read the blogs and stuff like that. And I'd come home and, and she'd, she'd go in my dad's office and say, you know, such and such said oh. this. And he was never one to, to read the blogs or anything like that. But, you know, they were getting oh, yeah. chewed out on, on those and saying, you know, just random people just saying, uh, uh, you know, terrible things. And why would you do this? Why would you do that? This kid's never going to amount to anything. Um, you know, and then heard a lot of the, you know, Todd Marinovich mm -hmm. um, comparisons and stuff like that. So it was hard for them, um, you know, for sure. But, uh, you know, I think they, they were just, um, you know, the, the, how they were and, and how they raised me, um, you know, just continued to be the same person no matter what happened. All right, so let's fast forward to West Virginia. Okay, okay. so you commit to West Virginia as a quarterback. Mm -hmm. um, and your freshman year, they ask you to switch to play receiver. What was that like for you? So I'm, I'm mid-year to West Virginia, mm -hmm. did, went through all spring ball as a quarterback, um, you know, and, and we're getting into fall camp. And the later end of fall camp, we're starting to do scout team stuff. Right. And at this point, um, you know, they, I've already learned I'm going to be redshirting. You know, I'm not probably going to see playing time. And, you know, every freshman going in wants to be of like, course, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be the starter. <laughs> I'm going to come in and all that. Um, you know, so I was just doing some scout team stuff. And we were playing Georgia Southern the first week and doing, you know, triple option. They run – they. They throw the ball like four right. times a game. So they're like, just go back there. So you're the, the scout team quarterback? I'm the scout team okay. quarterback. So I go back there and just do triple option stuff. Uh, do that, you know, for two. I think we prepped for them for like two weeks because we had camp. And so doing stuff like that, just running around. And um, the next week, I guess, you know, they saw some athleticism or mm -hmm. whatever. And we were playing a bigger receiver. I can't remember who we were playing. I think it might have been like Liberty or something like that, um, you know, a smaller school. And we had another walk-on quarterback who was, uh, you know, more of a pocket passer. They were like, you know, we, we're short on numbers. Like, just go out there. We'll show you the card, the play, <laughs> and just run the route. The old cards. You know, so. so I went out there. I was, you know, like, okay, the, the equipment manager wouldn't give you any gloves. He was like, <laughs> you're a quarterback. I'm not giving you any gloves. So I, you know, go out there. And, you know, I'm just doing that for a couple weeks, just doing what I can. I'm not, honestly, you know, it's playing scout team. Right. It's like. You're just and at that point you're just trying. To, yeah, and you're I'm trying to get on the field and do what the coaches want. I, you're gonna yeah, redshirt. and and honestly, once you once I knew I was like redshirting, I was like, whatever. I'm just gonna right. go out there and play football, like just have some fun. Like we always, you know, joke that scout team was like awesome because like no coaches said anything to you. Like you just go out there and do whatever. <laughs> um, so did that for like three three weeks, um, and then it's week four and we're playing or week five and we're playing Oklahoma State. And I get a text, so I'm still doing scout team that whole week. I get a text on that Thursday from Coach Hogerson, and uh, he says, do you want to play this weekend? And it you know, kind of came out of nowhere. I didn't think that was going to happen at all. Uh, and I texted him back. At this point, it wasn't like you play four games and you can still right, redshirt. Right. Once yeah, you play, your, your it's, it's, burnt. Yeah. Yeah, it's done. So, you know, I, I, texted him, I texted him back. I was like, no, you know, I don't really want to play. Right. Um, you know, he was cool with it. And then we, we lost that game, and he brought me in his office that Sunday uh, and was like, you know, we really need you to play. I was like, all right, you know, I'll do what I can to help the team. Um, so I play. So got moved up to the travel squad. Um, we were playing Baylor at Baylor that next week, and that's back when Baylor was, yeah, you know, were, they were like number two in the country rolling, at the yeah. time or something. So, um, you know, I got put in the game, played well. I think I had like three catches, um, scored a touchdown, um, you know, and then the, the next game we played TCU, and I was the leading receiver that game. Uh, and then the week after that, experienced something that I didn't really know uh, coming from a quarterback. Um, got a the, the receiver legs, uh, oh, yeah. which my legs were shot. I mean, I couldn't. 
run 10 yards. Well, you without... weren't in receiver shape. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, and, I mean, playing quarterback, you really don't. <laughs> like, when someone says their legs hurt, you're kind of just like, yeah, go out there and run. Like, come on now. Like, I, And they tell you not to throw a deep ball 50 right. yards downfield. So, um, definitely was not prepared for that. Right. And that kind of hit me like a brick wall. So, didn't really play much after that, just like, I couldn't, you know, I thought I'm running full speed and I'm looking at the film and it looks like I'm about to fall <laughs> over with every step I take. Um, you know, so kind of towards the end of the season, get my legs back before the bowl game, uh, played a good bit in the bowl game, uh, only had one catch, but had a catch for a touchdown mm -hmm. and it ended up being uh, the game winning touchdown against Arizona State. And then after the season, uh, I told Coach Hogerson, I said, you know, I want to go back to quarterback. I I told you when I played receiver, mm -hmm. I said, I want to go back to quarterback after the season. Uh, you know, and he was like, okay, go back to quarterback. But really in his mind, he was like, no, you're going to play receiver. Right. Um, so that next spring ball, I was doing a little bit of both, you know, half quarterback, half receiver stuff, and just not getting better at either mm -hmm. one. I mean, you can't do both yeah. at that, that level and, and get better. And, um, you know, after spring ball, I, I stayed there for the first summer term and then um you know told coach Hogan, so i said well, i want to go to a junior college i want to play quarterback i'm not done you know I want, and th at this time they're bringing will in mm -hmm. so i already know you know where they're where <laughs> right. they're going with this and everything so i told him i want to go to juco and you know he was cool with it. we kept a good relationship left on great terms which uh ended up helping me right, of um, course, yeah. after junior college um you know so I went to junior college played Started 10 games, um, you know, played, played well, played, mm -hmm. but figured out that the junior college recruiting is just different. I mean, it's, it's not like high school. They say, you know, we see talent, we can develop this kid. They need a guy to come in and start from junior you college. You needed Steve Clarkson to, <laughs> to do another cheesy video. Yeah, I know, <laughs> for, for real. And um, so, yeah, played 10 games. And then really when I, I knew is, I, so I worked out for, for, Ball State, and mm -hmm. I, I realized that the recruiting wasn't going to happen until... You worked out as a quarterback as for a Ball quarterback. State? Okay. So uh, I realized the recruiting wasn't going to happen until after, you know, the season when they're doing bowl prep and stuff like that. So I kind of just, like, didn't expect anything to happen during the season anyway. So mm -hmm. I really wasn't, you know, stressing about it at all. So I worked out for Ball State, and I think, you know, okay, I'm going to throw for this guy. I'm going to get an offer, and I'm just going to get it, you know, get him going. And... Um, you know, really a, a switch clicked when I threw for him, threw the best I probably thrown for three years. And, you know, he said, uh, you know, we just don't have a spot for you at quarterback, but wow. you can come, you know, walk on as an athlete. Um, you know, at this point, I was like, okay, you know, this is, this is God telling me right. that you're not going to be a quarterback anymore, you know, and, and you got to go play receiver if you want to, you know, play at a high level again. So at this time, you know, it was kind of late in the game. I think it was like three weeks before the dead period. To, and I wanted to be back at a school, mm -hmm. um, you know, in January. And the dead period wouldn't have been up until after I wanted to be enrolled in school. So it was getting close to that time, like early, early December, late November. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to walk on somewhere. I'm not going to get any offers at receiver. I don't have any film at receiver besides what I played at West Virginia. I don't think anybody's going to offer me off of you know, 13 catches mm -hmm. or whatever I had. Um, I was like, okay, I'm going to walk on somewhere. And, you know, thinking of a couple places to walk on and, um, you know, TCU or something like that, like I'm gonna, just going to go grind and earn mm -hmm. a spot. And then Coach Horgerson, uh called me three days before the dead period and said, you know, come back and play receiver. And <laughs> we still say, like, you know, that I was his easiest recruit ever. You know, I said, I don't need a visit. Just send me the papers over. I'll sign them and, and come back. And, um, yeah, I came and back. at to, this point, you're fully committed. Fully committed. At right? this point, it was really like, okay, you know, you can wake up right. 10, 15 years from now and say you gave it your all at quarterback and it just didn't work out. Um, you know, and, and, and I think – Honestly, going to that junior college really, you know, a lot of people have said to me, mm -hmm. should have just stayed at West Virginia, you know, been a receiver for your sophomore year. And I think I just wouldn't have been as committed. Um, you know, I think I would have been kind of half in, half out, like saying, right. playing receiver, but wishing I was still playing quarterback. At After going to junior college, I was, you know, completely after that season, realizing it didn't work out. I was able to commit 100%, right. um, you know, to receiver and then went back to West Virginia and, you know, had and balled the, last the last two, two years. years. Yeah, so. Touchdown machine. Yeah, so that's, uh, 
That's kind of how it's, it went. It's, it's crazy, and, and I always think like you know the the young guys that are in your position now, mm-hmm. getting ready for the draft and, and whatever sport. A lot of that attention starts high school, college. You start to get recruited, but for you, it was it was opposite. Obviously, we talked about as a as a teenager, but hearing you know that from where you were then to going to West Virginia to going to JUCO to kind of have an epiphany and just saying, you know what, my path is taking me somewhere else. What is what is like the biggest thing you've taken away from your journey to this point? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of highs and a lot of lows, mm-hmm. um, you know, that come with the game. And I think it, you know, teaches you how to deal with life and how to deal with different adversity. Um, you know, but just being persistent and being determined, um, you know, obviously had to be persistent in other ways, mm-hmm. like not being persistent to where, okay, I'm not giving quarterback up. But knowing, you know, when to to really give something up, uh, and, but being persistent to say, okay, you know, I'm I'm coming in as a junior to play receiver, and I want to play on Sundays. Like that's okay. the ultimate goal. Um, you know, I've got two years to kind of make my mark. Um, you know, and, and just be persistent and determined to kind of think like, okay, these guys have been playing this position their whole life. I've been playing it for, you know, this is really my first off season, my going into my junior year. Of, of preparing to play receiver. So I kind of, you know, woke up every day like, okay, you got to catch these guys. Um, you know, these, these guys have a, you know, they're up here and you're, you know, down here. Right. So you got to close the gap. And that's, um, you know, kind of how I've tried to, you know, really have like a chip on my shoulder and, a, and an edge and, and really how I prepared. Um, you know, but I think also being able to play quarterback and, and not only just play quarterback because you're, you know, the, like a lot of guys play quarterback in high school because they're the best athlete mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever it may be. But, um, you know, p- actually studying the yeah. position and, and, and knowing, you know, defenses and stuff like that. Um, and then playing receiver, but really preparing and, um, you know, attacking the receiver position like I'm playing quarterback. What, what, was, what was the, so you mentioned, I know the legs, right? You didn't have receiver legs early on. And then obviously just the lack of experience playing that position. What, besides those things, what was, and maybe it still is, obviously you're still working. I mean, you have that great Mm -hmm. mentality where you always have to just keep getting better and better. What has been the biggest challenge for you or what was the biggest challenge for you in the transition, you know, besides just having to catch those guys experience wise? Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, one of the hardest things was making the transition, you know, physically, Uh um, you know, because it's at the end of the day, it's football. Like yeah. you're playing a different position, but it's still football. Um, you know, so learning the technique was, um, you know, something that I don't think was very challenging because I, I feel like I was able to pick up on it uh, pretty good. But, you know, it's something that took a lot of effort. Like, you know, I, I have no idea how to get off a jam <laughs> coming into say. my junior <laughs> year of college where I want to play on Sunday someday. And you're, you know, these guys are like, sometimes, some guys are coming out early and, they're, and, and everything and they're pros, the like they're too, pros, yeah. you know, they're pros at it. So, you know, definitely having to learn that in such a short amount of time, um, you know, was a challenge. And then, you know, just changing body composition and everything like that. I mean, playing quarterback, you want to, you know, be a little bit Did more you have to lose up. weight? Did you lose? Um, you know, I was always a skinnier kid. Right. So I was always kind of putting on weight, yeah. um, you know, just skinny white kid (laughs) which is who's that twig out there with the jersey on so I was always a kid that um you know was kind of skinny so I was always really gaining weight Mm -hmm. um you know but just eating better and you know doing things like that running longer running more you know changing the the, being able to have more leg stamina and you know so things like that but so when we're doing more conditioning like when I was a quarterback at West Virginia it was like okay I'm competing with the quarterbacks now you're a receiver, you're trying to beat everybody because right. the guys that, it doesn't matter if they're receivers or DBs, you're, you're going to have to go against them. So, um, you know, just th- those were probably two of the things that were the most challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but it was a, I think it was a good transition. In, in this process now, because you have a pro day coming up, uh, the, the draft obviously, mm-hmm. and, and I know at the combine you get asked so many different questions, and I always like this when they ask the quarterbacks, but asking you, you're, you're going to be, wherever you go, you're going to be a great player, and, and that team is going to be happy, but what type of player, and, and you can tell everybody what type of player they're getting and what will you bring to a football team? 
Um, well, I mean, I think that one of the biggest things that, uh, you know, they're going to be getting is a leader. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's kind of just the way that I've, I grew up. I, I always was, you know, the leader and, and tried to really in the early part of my career, I was more of a lead by example kind of guy. Um, you know, no one was going to outwork me, stuff like that. But over the last two years, um, you know, really tried to get better at being a vocal leader and not like the guy that's in right. the middle of the circle. Like You don't want to try too hard. Yeah, but, like yeah. the rah-rah guy and stuff like that, but saying like just getting in the, you know, in the huddle and saying like, let's go guys. Like, yeah. and, and when we're in camp and things are hard, like let's take it play by play. We're doing tempo period and stuff like that that nobody wants to do. Just being able to, you know, talk to the guys and, and look the guys in the eyes. Um, you know, that's, that's what, um, you know, first and foremost, probably would like to say that a team's going to get, which I think is a little bit different than a lot of, you know, other receivers because a lot of other receivers are, you know, very physically gifted right. and they're going to just get a playmaker and, you know, stuff like that, which I'm not saying that that's not me, but I, I wouldn't say that's my first. But you also, but you're, but you're, you're our quarterback at heart. Yeah. So you yeah. have that natural leadership. Yeah. Ability, yeah. Which and I then, think will yeah. translate so well at the next yeah, level. Yeah. And I, kind of at the, at the combine and stuff when I was, you know, Tory Holt was down there right. and talking to him. So I'm kind of picking his brain and everything like what, what kept you in the league so long and what, you know, what are all the things that you think make successful NFL careers? Cause you see all these receivers that right. are different shapes, sizes, speeds, all that, but that some different guys figure out how to have success. So I'm trying to figure out what that formula is. Is there, is there a, a current or even past receiver that, you know, you look up to now or you model, you try to model your game uh, one, I mean, one guy that I study a lot of is probably Michael Thomas. Yeah. Um, you know, I know a lot of people probably were expecting like a white receiver. No, I, but, I, hear Eric, I hear Eric Decker and, <laughs> you know, I hear uh, Jordy Nelson, Adam Thielen. I hear that all the time. So... You know, I think Michael Thomas were pretty similar in the way that were, you know, built, yeah. had the same range, um, you know, similar speed. So I, I, you know, I try to just watch his film and see, um, you know, the different ways that he's uh, going to create separation mm -hmm. because there's so many different ways to create separation, whether it's your stick or using hands yep. or whatever it may be. Um, you know, so just really studying his game to see what he does because he's obviously had you know, a very successful career and just, you know, the short amount of yeah. time he's been there. There's a handful of guys that have kind of done what you've done, you know, former quarterbacks. You look at uh, Julian Edelman, who's a quarterback at Kent State, and he just won the Super Bowl MVP and, um, in my opinion, one of the best receivers in the NFL at what he does. He's, he's phenomenal. Heinz Ward uh, was a high school quarterback and won an MVP, a Super Bowl MVP for the Pittsburgh Steelers, a great receiver. When, when you see stories like that I mean does that inspire you I know you look up to Michael Thomas but when you know it's been done before what you're doing yeah I mean I, I think uh, it, it really does but um, you know I think that quarterbacks make you know I think they would make great receivers now um, we have the best hands on the team yeah, I always say I've, that I've, I've, I always I've, say that and everyone always says that because they're kind of, you know, they <laughs> we're always catching got the yeah. ball um, you know but I've, I, I've, I've always thought that, that quarterbacks would you know be great wide receivers because, um, you know, and just watching those guys, when I was at quarterback, you know, and throwing a ball, like I always knew what I wanted the receiver to do. Right. But, you know, it was sometimes hard to get that connection, you know, kind of across and, and, and make him understand, you know, what I want. Like, okay, give me a little bit more space on that go ball. So, <laughs> I, you know, so I feel like, um, you know, when the ball's in the air, just knowing what the, you know, quarterback is, it, it wants. And, um, you know, I think those guys did a great, great job. And they both obviously, um, you know, Heinz Ward had a very successful career yeah. and uh, Julian Oman still – you know, is having an awesome career and, you know, had a great Super Bowl and everything. But, um, you know, I just think, like, really with, with you know, having friendly angles and, and, and stuff that are quarterback friendly, like yep. just always, um, you know, and understanding how crucial an interception is. Like, when that, <laughs> if I know that ball is, like, not to me, I'm tackling oh, that. Heck, yeah. You have an advantage, like, man. You already yeah, know all so, that. Yeah, so, um, you know, I think it, it really just puts the receiver and, and the quarterback on the same page, like, you know, one thing for me when I was when I would come off the field, I was going straight to the quarterback tent and talking to Will and yep. Spav, who was um, my offensive yeah. coordinator, yeah. and we would always have conversations because Will's got a million things. I mean, you know, you yeah. gotta you gotta worry about protection, <laughs> you gotta worry about all that. I can sit out there, you know, in my stance, and if it's a run play, I can just look at what the safeties are doing. I know. And, 
you know, see different coverage and say, this is, this is how they're playing. They're playing inside, outside leverage. We have this, we have that, third down. You know, this is what they're doing and everything. Um, you know, so I think it just gives uh, you another, um, you know, vantage mm -hmm. point of what they're doing on, on defense. Um, you know, I think that contributed to a lot of our success at West Virginia, too. Getting a chance to cover you in West Virginia the last couple of years has been awesome to watch. And just your story and really just the, the drive and the commitment that you've had. And, and obviously your path took you in a lot of different directions. Oh, yeah. But for you to just, just kind of keep staying the course and not giving up on your dream, maybe it was quarterback at some point, but now you're going to be a bad NFL receiver. <laughs> I really believe that you're going to be successful. And, and for me personally, I just want to wish you – the best of luck because I know whatever team gets you is going to get a great player and a great kid. And your parents, if they watch this, they should be proud, obviously, of how they handled that and proud of, uh, you know, just talking to you today, proud of the, the young man that you are, man. So uh, I'm looking forward to watching you ball on Sunday. Thank it's you. awesome. Enjoy it. it. Enjoy it. Soak up every minute of it because yeah. it does go by this, fast. Uh, so this has kind of been the, old, like the, the time where I've reflected on the last, you know, couple of years at college and Actually, you know, Jordan Palmer made a statement when he said, you know, this is really the, th the only three months for a oh, while yeah. that you don't have to worry about anybody else but yourself. Mm -hmm. You worry about, you know, you, and, and at the end of April, you're going to be drafted to a team. You have to worry about your team, all that. College, you had to worry about your team, school, high school, same thing. So uh, this is like really the, the last three months that you can really just focus on yourself, um, you know, and, and being able to reflect on what happened. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me when I was going through this process and I was, you know, going to be at one of the top quarterbacks and uh, just the scrutiny and all that kind of stuff. And Steve yeah, Carson, it's definitely, Steve it's Carson, definitely a lot tougher for you. Well, but I was going to say, if, if I could go back and I would do what you said, I would, I would really try and enjoy the moment mm -hmm. um, enjoy the process because it does like once you get in the league, it is a business and it's football and it's fun and you'll have a blast, but it's different. You know, you're, you're making a lot of money. You have a lot more responsibility on your plate. Um, as well as playing football. So, so Jordan is right, and I'm sure you're getting great advice, obviously, but just really just enjoy the moments. Enjoy your pro day with your, your teammates, you know, because mm -hmm. you'll be gone. You'll have new teammates next year. Yeah. And um, enjoy the process, and, and you'll, be, you'll be fine. Greer delivers. 